A while ago I was asked how quickly I could explain what all the controls on the organ do. I thought about that and I'm not going to try and do it as quickly as possible, but this is a quick run through of what most of them do. While an organ might have a keyboard that looks like a piano, it doesn't work in the same way. A piano has mechanical linkages that actually make real sounds, whereas an organ keyboard has a bunch of electronic switches that do nothing other than make clicky noises unless you use something else that's connected to them to generate sounds. A pipe organ can use mechanical linkages between keyboard and pipes, that's called a tracker organ, or the electric ones or electronic ones will use wiring between the keyboard and all sorts of sound generators, some that might be air driven, some that might be electronic. On my organ there's only a single switch under each key and when you press it it sends signals to um, a very early sort of computerized system. This one's mostly analog but with computer control. A uh, Hammond would have had um, about nine contacts under each key and there'd be one contact for every drawbar so every drawbar is individually switched on and off. This organ just uses a single wire system or single switch system I should say and when you press a key it sends a signal to a variety of things depending on how you've chosen how you've selected your settings um, on this organ there's a central do flicky here which allows you to select which group of tone generators to control so if I go for the upper tab voices that means that all of these ones here the upper tabs are used for the upper manual. Um, if I pick an 8 foot flute that's the same pitch as the piano, in other words middle C, here's the key, there's the lock near the middle, middle C on the low keyboard, middle C on the upper keyboard, that's the same pitch as a piano, not the same tone, the same pitch. Now there's a bunch of other flutes up here and they're all marked in feet and the numbers actually refer to um, pipe organs. If you had a rank of pipes that could generate sound on the keyboard, you'd measure the length of the longest pipe and that's how you'd name them. Um, for flutes, for some voices, the actual numbers are a lie. Um, instead of measuring the length of the flute, length of the pipe, you just rate it as the same pitch as the flute. So if it has the same pitch as an eight foot flute, and it's an oboe, you call it an eight foot oboe regardless of what the actual length is. Um, I don't know which pipes in particular work, do that technique, but that's how it works. Just so the organist knows that everything that has an 8 on it is piano pitch. Now below that we have a 16 foot, that's an octave down. So if I play the same key again with both of them on, I get two pitches at the same time. Which is the same as doing 8 foot with middle C don't have exactly the same tomba, tamba, timba, whichever one you like to call it, but the pitches are the same. Um, four foot flute is an octave above, so if I turn that one on, hit middle C again, two notes are playing. This time it's the same as middle C plus an octave above. Now, if I have a real pipe organ, an eight foot flute might sound nice. On an electric organ, eight foot floats are kind of a bit not very impressive, and so you tend to have combinations of pipes in use. So if we put a 16 and a 4 on, you start to get what you think of as an organ tone. Unfortunately, a lot of electronic organs grumble and make horrible distortions down the bass end of the keyboard doesn't sound very musical, neither does that. But if we go up an octave, they sound, tend to sound more musical. And we can do that because as soon as I turn on that eight foot flute, I'm playing something lower down at the same time as something higher up. And if I was to play piano pitch up here, just eight foot flutes, very um, 
pin and sound a bit like um, a street organ. But if I put a few more on, so 16, 8 and 4. Sounds more like an organ, sounds more like an instrument. We have a bunch of other flutes up there. Um, and every time they half, you know, 8 foot, 2 foot, 1 foot, it's an octave above. So if I just go back to 8 foot again, add a 4, swap to 8 and 2, swap to 8 and 1, Those ones are kind of obvious, um, and basically you can put them all on and get a very solid sort of sound. We also have ones with fractions on them. Now these ones are more interesting. They're um, a fifth rather than an octave. So if I put an eight and five and one third foot, which won't sound very nice, so we'll get this which is the same as playing C and G. If I do eight with a two and two thirds, that's the same as C, oh, and I can't reach it with one hand, but C and G an octave above, um, which sounds a strange thing to do, but playing with the fifths and roots together does make nice sounds. If I put on a couple. Those, if I was to do the same thing with out using the fifth pipes, different effect whatsoever. So it gives you a pitch in between the other ones that actually sounds nice in most situations. Sometimes it doesn't, especially if you're playing complex chords. You could put them all on, but that tends to sort of not. Doesn't sound too brilliant. Unless you're trying to do that full organ effect. It's generally better with some off, some on, and various combinations. We also have over here some what are called percussive tones. I just turn off most of the flutes and put on one of them. play them just by themselves. It's a pop that dies away with either a long or a short, which gives interesting percussive effects. There's also a click effect that gives you that sort of grotty switch that the Hammonds used to have. So if I put someone on like that. And it's, it only works when you sort of play percussively. If you go chord change, firing off but not the actual tones and there's a little loudness switch too for that so that can be a bit stronger now next to the flutes we have some so-called instrumental voices brass oboe string and string again um, there's the eight foot and four foot eight foot 16 foot the idea being that all eight foot somethings have the same pitch helps you to work out what combinations you want to use and gives you a ballpark idea about which ones will work together off the without trying them all out straight away they're not really true instruments if I put on brass 16 foot I don't know any instrument that sounds like that the oboe is sort of close but not really very reedy, very thin and reedy. Doesn't have the tone I quite expect. Let's put on a string eight foot. Four foot's just a pitch octave high. Put them both on together. They don't really sound like strings and oboes and brass. 
Pipe organs have the same thing. They have pipes that are named string and horn and whatever. They don't actually sound like a genuine instrument, but they're somewhat reminiscent of it. So when you're deciding what registrations to use on your organ, you've got something to go for. Um, modern electronic organs have a different set of tones generators that actually do emulate the instrument but there's a lot of instruments you can't play the same on a keyboard. I mean, a stringed instrument that you bow but played on the keyboard doesn't really work in the same way. You don't get the same attack and decay. Some of them have effects that you can add that sort of stuff, but then you don't have the same way of controlling it. Um, so you can't really get the same effect. And while we're still playing with the upper keyboard, um, there are some effects that can be added to those. So if I put on 16, 8 and 4 again, at the moment it sounds a continuous tone. Um, now this organ has a simulated vibrato, vibrato which is a bit icky. But it make it a heavier one. Sounds too much like pitch bending rather than vibrato. And there's a delay, so that means it, it won't start straight away. If I pick something else that might show it off. So if I keep play legato style, it might kick in. If I play staccato style. in. Um, unfortunately I can't adjust the delay on this, it's just preset. Next to that we have tremolo and chorus which is emulating a Leslie. A uh, Leslie has spinning speakers, uh, this doesn't, it just modulates the sound between sets of speakers spaced around the cabinet. So if I put on chorus that's the sound of a slow rotor if I flick on the, les, the speed switch to tremolo, we get the um, tremolo effect. And this organ's, I think, trying to simulate somewhere between a Leslie and a pipe organ tremolo. They're both very different. Well, actually, all three are very different from each other. Now, on this organ, it only had a speed switch up there, which is hard to get to while you're playing. So I've added one... Um, a kick switch next to the expression pedal so I can do this. Changing speed by, without lifting a hand off the keyboard. Next to them are the Celeste effects and they do a bizarre phasing detuning sound. Um, best way to do it is just demonstrate it is to actually demonstrate it. I don't know how well, I don't know how well that will come up on the camera because it's not really a proper stereo recording and you can't hear how it reflects the sound between things around the room but it sounds like um, a detuned version coming back in to on top of an in-tune version which but not properly. On, on a pipe organ, a Celeste pipe uh, is a two, ra two ranks of pipes. One slightly out of tune with each other so that you get that wavering effect. Um, you get the same effect with a 12 string guitar. You tune one set of strings in normally and the, the paired strings in slightly off so you get um, that uh, wavering effect between it. The only way I can demonstrate that properly on here is with the pedals because seems like the pedal generator is not synced to the other keyboard so if I do a turn that off that's uh, that's unmodulated on the pedal on the keyboard um, that's one of the pedals and if I play the two together variation 
but not much, it depends on just luck of the draw how it turns out if I try G instead. Now that's those Celeste effects can be applied to a few different things. The tab voices I've been talking about already on the upper keyboard and the lower keyboard which has tab voices but not as many to choose from and then the same Celeste effects can go to some instrument voices um, percussive instruments some allegedly traditional instruments but are very much synthesizer sounds and some very very cheesy synthesizer sounds I'll go through them later if I look at the lower keyboard the voices for that it has less and now an electronic organ um, it tends to be that the lower manual is not really used in the same way as the upper manual. Um, you tend to play melody on the upper keyboard with your right hand and either chords with your left hand on the lower keyboard or, or accompaniment or counter melody if you're good enough. Um, on a traditional organ you'd use both keyboards completely independently from each other. You could play everything on the lower keyboard and then for certain passages of the song you could switch to playing on the upper keyboard and use different instruments and all you have to do is change which keyboard you played on rather than fiddle the switches. Um, that doesn't really work too well on the electronic organ because, well, there aren't that many octaves on each keyboard and you get that horrible distorting sound and play lots of chords lower down. Same on the lower keyboard. And you get a, a similar sort of thing happen if you try and play chords with one hand on the lower keyboard at the same time as melody with the other hand on the same keyboard. You'll notice that the chords over there are much louder than the melody over here. Uh, a lot of electronic organs are not voiced very well. Whereas you go to a pipe organ, they're voiced so that the actual amplitude of the voices across the whole length of the keyboard sound good against each other. Um, a lot of organs, you know, have loud at one end and the other and nothing that I can do about that because it's not able to be readjusted. If I had a synthesized pipe organ you could adjust all that. They would they have allow you to revoice the organ to suit yourself or the area that you're playing in. The pedal board on this organ is just a single octave and it's also monophonic. In other words if you try and play two notes at once only the lowest one plays. Uh, most electronic organs are like that, only the really good ones are able to play more than one note at once. And th really they need to be able to play more than four because you play with your, your toe and your heel with both feet. So that's four notes in one go. And if you've got sustain happening, it's got to be able to continue to play the notes that you might have hit as well as the next one until the sustain, sustain goes away. Now the pedals on this organ I've only got a few choices. If we go back to the 8 foot, that's the piano pitch, but the pedal board is two octaves below middle C. If we hit the 16th, we get a deeper one, put them down together. Um, this organ's badly voiced. The 8 foot is much louder than the 16 foot. So if I flick the 16 on and off, you don't hear much of a change. You hear a lot of change if you hit to flick that one. There's a tuba, which doesn't really sound too much like a tuba to me. A bass guitar, which is not much like a bass guitar. And the string bass. sound much like a string bass to me but you know, yeah, yeah, some of them are only good in combinations it also has a celeste effect on the pedals which won't show up on this sound very much but um one of those um, you can't really 
hear the phase in fact but you can hear it's changed its tonality now there's a volume control for the pedals so you can adjust how loud the pedals sound against the rest of the instruments um, the uh, manuals have a balance control between the two of them which allows you to decide which one's louder than the other um, not a very good way of doing things it would have been much better if the upper manual was at a fixed volume and you could adjust the lower manual by itself because you might want to make one louder than the other for a um, solo or something but you don't really want to change one up and one down at the same time the rest of the organ is controlled by the expression pedal which is down there by the right foot and that controls the volume of everything as well as the master volume control there I briefly touched on the start this is the central controller thing called the orchestral conductor for a swanky name what happens is when I press a note on the upper manual or the lower manual this thing controls which group of voices it speaks to so if I upper tab voices it uses those to generate its tones if I do the um, orchestral presets you'll do from these very synthesizer sounding effects and you can combine them together so you can have um, a bunch of them on at the same time almost all of them except for one or two of those sound generators which are available for the upper and lower keyboard but only one at a time so if you choose it on the other keyboard it pops off so if I try and choose um, the percussive on the lower it disappears off the upper, it'll only do one at a time and this was a neat thing of this organ in this era which meant you could set up um, say organ tones for the verse, play with synthesizer for the chorus and flip between the two without sort of taking your hands away from the centre of the console um, so what do we have? We have the orchestral presets which are these rather cheesy synthesizer sounds <laughs> clarinet which which while you can think yeah it's, it's an attempt to sound like a clarinet no clarinet really sounds like that the accordion is a bit wheezy saxophone well not much different another one of those synthesizer things trombone another synthesizer now one thing I've noticed with these is that um, with a lot of organ voices they only sound good on part of the keyboard so if I pick the clarinet around middle C to upper C not too bad octave up not too bad not too bad but some voices you'll find definitely have their favourite sort of place to be played and it's making a fool of me at the moment but um, the general idea is sometimes you've got to pick a voice to where you play or change octaves when you change voices on the keyboard so it sounds good uh, if we go to the percussive voices we have a rather bad electric piano very quick decay there is no velocity there is no velocity sensitivity, it always plays the same loudness. There's a harpsichord, a vibraphone, it doesn't sound very much like a real vibraphone, it's still a nice sound. And again, it's one of those ones where it's um, this one's a pretty good example of we hit the sustain. I think it sounds nicer around here than it does over here. There's what they call an acoustic guitar. And a jazz guitar. Which I don't think sounds that much like jazz guitars and sound a bit like the ice cream van. 
And then we have these solo synthesizers. Now that's called solo because it only will play one note at a time. Uh, that's all it can do, which sounds a bit, mm, a bit naff, but then when you play it with other things at the same time, so if I do, if I combine the so-called saxophone with the synth brass and play the two together, you can hear that it's playing one note while the rest can play chords, which gives you um, a way of enhancing the lead note out of something. Whoops, can't really play with this thing in my hand. But yeah, the solo synthesizer has a bunch of things like a violin. It doesn't really sound like a violin. That's, that's supposed to be a harmonica. There's a trombone. Which doesn't sound like a trombone, but they've tried to be cute and give it a bit of a detuning effect where it's not very accurate and that just sounds out of tune to me rather than nice. Saxophone. Oh, I don't think it sounds like a saxophone, but it's okay as an instrument of some sort. This is supposed to be a trumpet. It doesn't have the strength that I think a trumpet should have. There's a jazz flute. And a whistle which sounds like the X-Files whistle. And cosmic fuzz. A synth chopper. So I combine that with something else. Um, now these, the solo synthesizer has some other extra bits. Um, both the um, this orchestral voices and it, they have um, a timber control. You can. If I put it in the middle and play, which is why I need my one hand, you can make it a bit more mellow or bright. Yeah, that one's got a sweep on it, a phasing sweep. I'll pick something which doesn't. I should put my elbow on the keyboard. Synthesizer that can do what was that? That was a synth chopper. You can pick say the saxophone. Whether it's really bitey or no. Jazz flute. A volume control so you can do just how loud this is compared against everything else. You can also go through the um, Celeste effect. And there's a phaser which does that sweeping phaser effect. If I pick a different one and make it more obvious. And I put my finger on something I didn't mean to. Tiny camera, know where to hold at that point, your fingers on buttons. It also has a pitch control. God knows why, because you can't do anything useful with it. If I well, if I play with it, you, you can't return it back to the center position without hunting for it. If I put it on with something else. Sounds like somebody's playing a tune on the car horn. Sounds awful. The only way to get it back in tune 
is to take the phaser off. Tuned against another voice with all the modulation turned off to get rid of the beat notes. That's the only way you can get it back where it should be. There is no reset. What else do we have? We have organ presets, which is a bunch of buttons here, which gives you four different preset sounds. <laughs> Okay, there's a string ensemble, um, of its era, this sounded quite nice. And there is a variation on it where you can add an octave below at the same time. So that's like playing C and C below. shimmering effect. And there was also a vocal ensemble which again had a one and a two option which gave you just um, piano pitch as well as adding an octave below. The vocal ensemble sounds a bit weird. Doesn't sound like voices to me, sounds like some sort of warbling reed. I'll put the second one on. And it's just playing this plus an octave below at the same time. And that's the upper manual. Now the lower manual has less on it. Um, it had those tabs I've already gone through. With well, the other one, you've got eight foot four foot, two foot and one foot flutes which are slightly more mellow than the other keyboard and they've also tried it on a pipe organ trick um, on a pipe organ when you play a rank of pipes some of them will be over there in the room, some will be over there in the room, some will be over there and um, this organ's done the same thing uh, on, if I play on the upper keyboard kind of centralised, if I play on the lower keyboard they seem to come from a slightly different direction, it's really noticeable if you wear headphones um, so it's just by the different speakers around the cabinet there's about four speakers in the cabinet so you've got the flutes, you've got a diapason or a diapason or how are you supposed to say that, I cannot remember which is a sound like a real one but it's got a bit of a to the flute sound compared to the eight foot flute which is very sort of hollow you can put them on together and there's a eight foot horn of some sort again that's one of those voices which doesn't sound good by itself it's more of a adding to something else eight foot string they call it a cello and a four foot string. So if I put a few of those on together, uh, let's try that. Now this part of the conductor is for the uh, lower keyboard and that can, the upper, ta the tab voices, the percussive presets which are these Tommy. Those voices can be played on the upper or lower manual. Um, same as the synthesizer, that can be played by the upper or the lower manual. It's got its own it's got its own string ensemble. With the same business about being able to play an octave below at the same time. And the vocal ensemble. And 
it's also got the same one or two voices at the same time effect of playing an octave below on top of what you're playing and like the other one you can play combinations of them and despite having this organ for 20 years I still don't use that as much as I, as I might have used it and still don't remember which one to press without looking another feature this organ has that um, a lot of the electronic organs don't have is um, sort of thing you used to see on harmoniums, a harmonic coupler what this does is when I play that's just the 8 foot by itself, if I put the coupler on it'll play this note plus something an octave and a root above or two octaves and a root above so harmonies will have a mechanical coupler so that you know, you'd play C and uh, you'd play C, it would hit, bring the other note down for you by itself. This has, does it electronically, and you've got another one, which probably means something to people from a different music system than us, but um, it doesn't, doesn't sound a good combination to me. And the lower manual's got them as well, but different ones. They've got uh, two and two third, the upper manual has that, a two which is basically two octaves above, so if I play eight foot by itself put the two foot cupper on it's very obvious, I'll try that again so that's time with those voices on no coupler it's doing, it's playing an octave above and there's a one and three fifths as well. Interesting. Um, I don't really use it much on the lower manual. On the upper manual, it can help for um, when you've got things like these which only have one. Yeah, you know, there's only one oboe, there's one brass, and there's two strings. It allows you to sort of pretend you've got more voices simply by playing more keys at the same time. There's a bunch of registration settings. Now these ones, it's the sort of thing that really interested me with the organ, but then I haven't used much since I got it. First of all, there's a church organ preset which just selects some tones for the... and the pedals. Selects a whole punch of voice that's supposed to sound like a church organ. a so-called big band which does some of bits of this and bits of that and bits of this um, I've never really used those much because I don't quite like them but there are four settings here that you can program yourself what happens is you can set a bunch of voices all of these switches up here and those ones up there and it'll, when I hit record and the one I want to store it into that button hat will that memory will remember all those settings now I can change to some other ones and put that in the second one and so change change all the settings in one go. Unlike a Wurlitzer though, this is all done electronically. None of these controls change position when you change the settings. On a Wurlitzer you change your registration, they all click up and down by themselves by magnets. You can see what settings you have and you can change them. So you might want to flip one or two flutes on and off in the middle of playing and it'll let you do that. This you can't. As soon as that's on, it's taken control. None of these controls um, will have any effect until you cancel it. You can cancel it with that, or by going to something else over here, it'll take over. Over here is the rhythm section, which is automated drums. There's a bank of buttons for preset patterns, 
and some variations you can change. So if I've got rock selected, rock one. That has some basic, you know, four different things you can do to vary what that rhythm sounds like. And some truly awful fill-ins. Um, I used to have another Technics organ before this a little keyboard. It had very nice fill-ins. This one's terrible. Uh, if I put on, say, swing. I don't think they sound nice at all, and you can use them as fill-ins or intros. You push the button down before the rhythm started, and start the rhythm. It'll start off with that as an intro, then go back to playing the rhythm normally. Now I just muffed it. I just press again. Very dull intro, just four sort of drum rim shots or drums clicks. Um, I think from memory this actually had PCM sound recordings of instruments rather than just making white and filtered white noise. Now you had the basic sort of rhythms that most organs have, rock, swing, march, waltz and a bunch of Latin stuff. Um, now the samba and the disco always sound like double tempo to me. If I start the thing going, uh, rock, rumba which is a generic Latin Sambo, another Latin. Sambo. Seems to be double tempo to me. Same as a disco. Uh, now, you know, I've already mentioned you've got vari you can add a little vari variation or you can ch change to a variation pattern and add some sort of extra bits on top of it depending what the rhythm is. They're all preset. You've got some balance control, or you know, tempo, balance, and volume. Well, volume is obvious. Balance was, um, see these little instrument diagrams here? You could make the cymbals and cowbells volume different from the bass, snare, rim shot. You could balance one against the other. So, oddly, if um, I push the balance up that way, those ones became louder. If I push the balance down that way, the ones at the top row became louder. I thought those were really stupid, so I've pulled it apart and re-reversed the way that control works. You've also got a little sequencer, and you can record um, a drum pattern. So you can maybe you want to do rock one for eight bars, and then rock two for eight bars, and have it automatically do that for you, and it will. I don't remember how many bars it can memorise, it's only a short amount of memory. But the best part of this was these record buttons here. These two, I can program my own rock rhythm or whatever rhythm I want into them using these instrument voices here. So if I hit the record button, choose pattern one, it's the composer, it's going to store my settings in that one. Then what I do is say hit bass drum and see these numbers on the lower manual they're um, divisions of the rocks so if I want the bass to go oh, let's go 1 7 9 start it going you get the basic rock beat. Now if I put a sh rim shot on 5 and 13. Now those are sort of, what are they coordinates? Well, it's a basic 4-4 four, four rhythm unit divided into 16ths. So I start that playing. Now I've got a very very basic rock 
I can I can actually do that while it's playing, but um, then I, I don't know how well the microphone will work while I'm talking. Now, if I want to add something to that, let's turn it into what organists will call a 16-beat rock by putting bashing cymbals eight times in a four-time four-four beat. So I don't know why this is called 16-beat rock. And if I want to cheat, I'll get it to add all three cymbals at the same time by pressing all three down, and I'll go. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. Start it going. That's what an organist would call a 16 beat rock rhythm, despite the fact the cymbals are only striking eight times for a bar. I've never quite understood why it's not called 8 beat rock. Um, and you know, so there's cowbells and whatever you can add to that. Um, some of these things, like the bongos, it's not just because it's a dual instrument, it's a pattern rather than just a plop, it's a pattern of one and the other. There's a hand clap, a cowbell, another type of bell which I cannot think of the life for me what it's called. Um, Sabaza, is it? Maracas. If I start it going, and let's put in some cowbell. One, five, nine, thirteen. Which sounds a bit silly. Put a hand clap on five, thirteen. Let's put a snare drum on one, nine. And pretty soon we're getting horrible sounding rhythms, but that that's how it works. And there's two of those, so you can set up two presets. Now normally this organ would memorise your settings and keep them for a few days or a week by charging a capacitor inside the memory from the mains. Uh, that memory is sort of gone cactus and now it doesn't survive being turned off for a few minutes. There's another little thing attached to the rhythm unit over here and there's a little arpe arpeggiator and if I put another rock rhythm that on so it just arpeggiates um, pretend harp or string in two patterns and double tempo button I've never liked that so it just doesn't sound very good um, there's also um, up here some other rhythm units which are okay. If I put on guitar, start it going. Actually, I'll turn the volume up so it's more obvious. Banjo. bad but I I've sort of maybe use one and turn it really low so it just sounds like something's joining joining with the rhythm but not being over dominating we've got some controls for how long the sustain lasts for on the upper keyboard the lower keyboard or the pedal um, there's also effects percussive voices so if I um, play the pedal and let go if I put on and I change that it becomes very stunted that will only work in a room with a natural reverb. I'm in a small room, sounds awful. If I put on a percussive voice as well, it also, it also affects the decay of the percussive voices. Uh, the percussive presets, that's the sustain for them little fellas up there again, so they can have longer, short sustain. They're all very short on this organ. It's only got eight eight note polyphonies, so it can only play eight notes at the same time. If you try and hit a ninth one, the lowest one down will disappear because only play eight notes at once. If you do a keyboard slide with a sustain on, only the last eight notes will play. And if you had a long sustain, you'd hear them clicking off as it runs out of tone generators. Their solution: make it a very short sustain. 
There is a spring reverb in here, or well, there's two little springs, they're about yay big. Doesn't sound very good, but it sounds better than a flat room. Um, if I... It's just a volume control for the effect. And tremolo speed, so I can do... Um, traditional tremolo. Slightly too fast, or more like a church organ tremolo. Most church organs don't have a tremolo, but sometimes they have it, and it always sounds slow. Somewhere there sounds good. And like a Leslie, it pretends to be um, the speed changes take time rather than happen instantly, so it ramps up and down. Over here we have another little computing a little bit. It's got a couple of memories where you can program a sequence of chords. It'll play them along with the rhythm. So you can do a three-handed piece by yourself. Just set it to play chords for um, in half measures or full measures for as long as you want them to play. That's those things there. It can... Well, if I go up here, you can... Yeah, let's record and recall to do with recording and recalling the, the um, play, the chord you put in. One finger chords, I hit one finger on the lower manual, C, B flat, and it'll play the chord and the bass. If I put fingered chords, I play the chord I want, and it'll play the bass that goes with it. And there's a memory button that means you can take your hand away. Um, there's a thing called Technicord, and what that does here is whatever chords I play down here get duplicated to whatever note I play in the upper menu. So if I let's get it to hold a C chord. Play a G chord. It's playing, as I play a note on the upper manual, it's playing that chord on the upper manual below the note I'm playing. Which, you know, an organist doesn't really quite do that way. I mean, if we play chords under the melody, playing the melody with the last two fingers on here and chords below, we tend to hold a chord, part of a chord here and play melody up here, not change the entire chord with every note, which is what that does. There's also a walking bass, so if I'm playing, if it's going to play the bass me with the rhythms, it can play a normal root fifth, um, I started going. doing just a root so as basic and more complex patterns as you go along I think you can do a might be able to walk the bass on the swing try that three buttons. Pedal to la. If I press that, take all the other bits off, um, the lower manual can play the pedals, which means instead of just a single octave of pedals, I can go an octave lower down, doesn't sound too good, or an octave above. And soon you find that pedal voices, pedal voices don't sound too good all the way up there, and you sort of work around that sort of range. So if I go, uh, and we've got 
two more switches, synchro button. If I hit, press that in, the drum unit will start playing the moment I hit a key on the lower manual or the pedal. So it'll just auto start. And it, it won't auto stop, it just starts. It'll keep on going until I stop it. And glide rhythm. There's a kick switch to the left of the expression pedal, which can either start and stop the drum unit. I'm doing that by hitting it with my foot. Or I can do a pitch bend. goes down one note, a semitone at a, at, a, at a fixed speed, you can't vary it, it just drops down one. We also have a knee lever which I've patted here, um, which you click a hit over with your knee. Now in this case on my organ all it does is allow me to use a, a sustain switch so I can leave the, you know, the sustain switch is on here and here and here and they won't do anything until I push that knee lever over. I can fold the knee lever up and then they're on all the time and I can control them here, which is useful for some things like you might be playing something and in the chorus you might want to have the sustain effect on. Take it off. And you can do that with your knee. So basically you're using both hands and both feet and you need to play the organ and in my case uh, left foot for the bass pedals right foot for the volume control kick starting the rhythms turning the fake Leslie speed slow and fast the knee switch on the right knee right hand on the upper key keyboard and left hand on the lower keyboard now you may notice that the keyboards don't overlap it's well because you tend to play them in the way I've suggested on electronic organ the right hand really needs to go that far down and the lower hand the left hand really needs to go that far up um, on a pipe organ they'll have the same number of octaves on both keyboard one side effect of this is although if I put eight foot flutes on both they're the same pitch, not the same timber, same pitch though. Same with all the tab voices. When I go to something like uh, the percussive presets, play the vibraphone, do it here. That's middle C. If I try and do it on the lower keyboard, middle C is shifted down here. Instead of being there, it's going down here because they've only counted up from the left of the keyboard rather than keep it in sync with middle C. And it does that with the upper and lower percussive presets and the solos. They can be upper and lower. Uh, bizarre little design, but that's how it is. So that's most about everything, I think, um, other than this one here, which is a bright and mellow switch. It's like turning a treble control down. Your voices on. Put it into mellow. It's like turning the treble down. It only affects the tab voices, doesn't affect the other ones. So that's basically it. You've got traditional tab voices, pedal, upper keyboard, percussive effects, percussive you know keyboard effects. Fake Vivato, Fake Leslie, Fake Celeste, Lower Keyboard, Little Tone Control, um, Cheesy Synthesizer, Pretend Percussive Instruments, Couplers, um, Master Control Area there, some Preset Registrations, those, those are presets just for the organ voices, these are presets for all of the controls above the keys. Rhythm units, rhythm accompaniment, and programmable chord computer.
and that's the Technics Unity organ.